from Washington. This is VOA News. U.S. drops a new round of bombs over Iraq. The Mideast ceasefire comes to an end. I'm Vincent Ruiz reporting from Washington. The United States military has launched a second round of airstrikes in northwestern Iraq using drones and fighter jets. A Pentagon spokesman said remotely piloted aircraft struck Islamic State militants near Erbil Friday. He said fighter planes later dropped eight bombs on vehicles and a mortar position in the area. Earlier Friday, the U.S. military dropped 250-kilogram laser-guided bombs on, it, on an artillery unit that was shelling Kurdish forces defending Erbil. White House officials say reports of the dire and deteriorating situation of Iraqi Christians and Kurds, along with the gains made by militants in the past week, triggered President Barack Obama's decision to authorize airstrikes and other military action in Iraq. VOA White House correspondent Louis Ramirez has a report. It was a number of factors that finally brought President Obama to authorize U.S. warplanes to strike militants in Iraq. White House spokesman Josh Earnest said the urgent reports the president saw this week about the dire and deteriorating situation were the number one reason. The second reason is the intelligence the president has been receiving about the militants' advances toward the northern Kurdish city of Erbil, where the United States has a consulate and a number of military advisors. That uh, also led to the president's conclusion that uh, a more robust military action uh, could be required to ensure the safety and security of uh, those American officials in Erbil. Luis Ramirez, VOA News, at the White House. More on this story at voanews.com. Israel pounded Gaza with a series of airstrikes Friday after Hamas resumed rocket attacks against Israel when talks broke down on extending a three-day truce. The latest fighting killed at least five Palestinians and injured two Israelis. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said he was deeply disappointed that the parties were unable to agree to an extension of the three-day break in the violence in their talks in Cairo. Egypt, which is mediating the talks, said the negotiations were making progress and urged a new truce. However, Israel recalled its delegation from the discussions Friday and said it would not negotiate with the Palestinians while militants continued to fire missiles. Fighting between government forces and pro-Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine continued Friday as Ukraine's government proposed sanctions against dozens of Russian companies and citizens. A spokesman for Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council said Friday that 15 Ukrainian servicemen were killed and 79 wounded over the previous 24 hours in fighting in eastern Ukraine. A senior UN human rights official, Ivan Simonovich, on Friday told the UN Security Council a reign of fear and terror in areas under control of separatist rebels in eastern Ukraine. On the United States, from the United Nations, VOA's Margaret Bashir has more. Assistant Secretary General for Human Rights Simonovich said that since April, the Ukrainian government has recorded over 900 abductions by armed groups. Abducted individuals have been used as an exchange currency to free members of armed group detained by the government. Speaking to the council via video link from Croatia, Simonovic said that since Ukrainian authorities began regaining control over some areas in the east, many hostages have been freed or released. But he said that more than 450 people are still missing. Russian envoy Vitaly Cherkin criticized the report as an example of exquisite political rhetoric where facts and conclusions are shaped to fit certain political requirements. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. Nigerian President Goodluck Jonathan Friday declared a national emergency over the Ebola outbreak and approved nearly $12 million of emergency funds to contain the outbreak has led to two deaths in the commercial capital, Lagos. Earlier Friday, in Geneva, World Health Organization Director Dr. Margaret Chen 
declared the outbreak an international health emergency that requires an extraordinary response to stop its spread. Rival Afghan presidential candidates have agreed to end their election dispute and begin working towards a national unity government. Abdullah Abdullah and Ashraf Ghani have been deadlocked on the ongoing audit, audit of 8 million votes cast during the presidential runoff, with only a fraction of ballots reviewed for irregularities so far. After holding a second day of talks with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry in Kabul, the candidates on Friday signed an agreement saying they would cooperate on forming a national unity government. Stocks? The S&P and, and Dow both posted their best day since March on Friday. I'm Vincent Bruce in Washington. That's the latest world news from BOA.